Yo, guys and gals, and um, welcome to, um, I don't know, I don't actually know what I'm going to call this. Um, how about we call it rum and sports, or cider and sports. I've not got a clue, but let's get right into this now. Let's go. That's fucking illegal. They're Yo, gang, what's going on? And um, welcome to rum and sports. I think I'm going to stick with rum and sports, but if you've got any suggestions for names, please leave in the comments below. What I want this show to be is basically a roundup of weekly sporting events I'm interested in. Um, I'm a massive fan of football. I'm a massive fan of the UFC. So um, without further ado, let's just, just jump into this and, and find out where it's going to take me. I thought I'd cover all the events that have just passed and the weekend's action that's just passed. Probably preview the Champions League and stuff that's coming up as well. Um, I might leave that out, depending on how long the video is. So, first on the agenda is football. We will start with the mighty, mighty sport that is football. And we will go back to Friday result, which was Championship Forest versus QPR, one all. A decent result uh, for both teams, I think. I think Forest have been struggling. Uh, they've got a takeover by a some sort of billionaire. But, yeah, unfortunately, Forrest on, 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 on the bit of a decline. And it's nice to see QPR get some stability finally after a few years. PSG win 2-1 against defending champions Lille, which is a great result, really. Uh, I think Lille beat them two times last year, once in the Cup and once in the League. I'm pretty sure that was the way it went. I'm not 100% sure. Breaking news today, on the 1st of the 11th, 2021, uh, Nuno Espirito Santos has been sacked by Tottenham Hotspur. Supposedly Antonio Conte is going to be his replacement, supposedly, which is a little bit devastating uh, in regards to, I was hoping he was going to go to Newcastle. That would have been, that would have been fabulous all around, wouldn't it? Well, for me, anyway. So, lead us straight on to Saturday then, which is the main day for all of the sport that really went on this weekend. You had the early kickoff between Arsenal and Leicester, which Arsenal won 2-0. Mikel Arteta seemingly turned it around. Now Arsenal will go through a 5-6-7-8 win streak where they will win a few in a row and then they'll falter. That's where they FTV kick off and give it a big one. Shout out to DT. I'm missing him on, on my FTV, by the way. He's absolutely fantastic. Is there pressure on Brendan Rodgers? Leicester have started really poorly this year. I'm wondering if if they continue that poor run and don't pick up as many points as what they did maybe last year. Are they in risk of, or is Brendan Rodgers at, at risk of, of losing that position? Or is his position very, very safe after the fantastic work he's done over the past sort of two, three years? I'd love him, bear in mind, I'd love him to take that Newcastle job. I would absolutely love it. I don't think you understand me. Uh, so that was a great result for Arsenal away at Leicester to win 2-0. Martinez will be happy. Brendan Rodgers will be fuming. Uh, which leads to the 3pm kickoffs then. Some surprising results in this weekend's 3pm kickoff. You had Liverpool 2, Brighton 2, which was a real, real, real surprise. Drop points for Liverpool. Liverpool are looking fantastic, but the drop points to Brighton at home it's a bit of a surprise and, and, and maybe there's a bit of uh, jitters or a bit of last year's evidence creeping in. A little bit of, you know, inconsistency popping into Liverpool. The same that happened sort of middle of last season when they, they started OK as far as I can remember. And then they sort of fell off sort of November, December way. Is that going to happen this year or are they going to maintain their strength and continue to push on and win the league. I think they're looking like the best team in the league at the minute. Another great result of the weekend was Palace beating City 2-0 at the Etihad. Absolutely stunning result for Patrick Vieira. Man City lose ground. You think Liverpool only gained a point? Man City lose ground. They lose a point on it. And having lost, what, I think, two now? Three now? Man City? It's looking a little bit, uh, what's the word? ominous for Pep at Man City and with him leaving in 2025 it always makes you wonder how much of the future he's looking to and is he looking for that instantaneous result as opposed to looking for what City are going to do in the next five or six years because this this generation at City I'm feeling is moving beyond I know they've swapped Fernandinho for Rodri I know that De Bruyne is coming to the peak Silva's gone Aguero's gone but I still kind of feel like it's a uh, It's time for a generation change at sea. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I'm obviously not there working day in, day out. Obviously, losing Pep Guardiola will be absolutely terrible. Like, terrible for City. God knows where they'll go from there. 
Obviously, Bayern went on strength for strength. Barcelona didn't do too bad after Pep, Pep left. But I think City have been... Barcelona had their style. Bayern Munich had their style. It was ingrained in their history and their in the way that they've done things for 40, 30, 40 years. He brought City that style. He's brought City the way that they play, the the patience, the 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 tactical nous that he puts into that squad from the youth team all the way up to the senior team. It's it's Pep Guardiola. So when he leaves, it's going to be very interesting to find out who and how the next uh, appointment manages to maintain the ship at Man City. Really, really sad news for me. Newcastle lost 3-0 to Chelsea. Um, it's a relegation fight for Newcastle. Despite the takeover, 320 billion is a fabulous number, you know. But who's going to want to go? Who is going to want to go to Newcastle at the minute? I think they will be looking for top of the range championship defenders. Defenders is what they need. Like if if they go out and buy a striker or a left winger or a right winger, it's fucking redundant. It's fucking redundant. Like. They can score goals. If you look at what they've got up top, there is a couple of goals there. There is enough goals in that in that front line to keep Newcastle up, I feel. Um, but I don't feel there's enough balls and enough steel at the back to keep them up. I feel they will go down. So they need defenders. They need some really, really top of the range championship defenders or some young up and coming really good European defenders who might peak in three years time but are still decent now they need something that's a little bit more than the shit show that they've got at the back but Chelsea look fabulous like strong compact quick uh, powerful a little bit weak I think the first 20 minutes I think Newcastle had a better of the first 20 minutes but Chelsea come into it like a like a like an experienced boxer. They they kind of gathered their feet, found their head, and then from then just went from strength to strength to strength and, and, and dominated, winning three 0 A little bit off the beaten track. We'd like to I wanna to like to leave the Premiership. I will leave all the other Premier League results in a little side scroll here. They'll have all been on the screen anyway, so you can so you can all see them. But I would like to actually dip over to League One and my little hometown team, Plymouth Argyle. As Plymouth Argyle are on an absolute tear at the moment. Uh, top of League uh, League Two, League One, as they went up last season. And very much looking like I could go and watch uh, Newcastle at Home Park next season. <laughs> if this freight continues, I couldn't imagine that. Newcastle United versus Plymouth Argyle in the championship. That is bananas. 320 billion versus barely 6 million, I think. I guess. Oh, I'm not sure how much Argyle's worth. I'll do some research and I'll find out the value of the club. But, oh my God, what an absolute uh, shit show that would be for the Newcastle owners if next season Plymouth Argyle versus Newcastle United at home park is a real life fixture. So shout out to the boys at Plymouth Argyle, doing a fantastic job. Uh, keep it up there, lads. Well done. Globe! So a quick dip over to Sunday's game, which is Norwich versus Leeds, which ended 2-1. And Villa versus West Ham, which West Ham absolutely dominated 4-1. Like, how good are West Ham looking at this very moment in time? Like. Genuinely, what a little team David Moyes has built there. They're winning in Europe. They're coming home. They're winning on the Sunday. And they are looking strong. I'd be very interested to see how they develop over the next three years. I'm always interested in the future and how teams can continue to develop and get a bit bigger, get a bit better. How they're going to like look to stack their youth up and bring senior players in to continue the... But it's very, very... Oh, that's the reason why football is so fascinating. So I'm wondering, like, for next season already... If, West Ham finish on a 7th or 5th, 7th to 5th this year. Another fantastic season for the boys at West Ham. Uh, they're looking really, really good. Um, if they can throw in a top four challenge as well. like I love that. Like, how great is that for football? Not just for English football, but for football in general. Like West Ham on a tour of Europe next season in the Champions League. I'll take that. I'll take the Amers abroad. Why not? Isn't it? Happy Amers, boys. Happy, happy Amers. So, that was a little football roundup. Next thing that I would love to cover on this on this 
first edition of uh, rum and rum and sports. Rum and sports <laughs> is the UFC. UFC 267. Uh, football and UFC are my two things. So those will be the two main sports that I will cover, that I will look at, that I will be delving into each week. That's fucking illegal. So this week was UFC 267. Uh, in case you don't know, that means basically for 267 months, UFC have thrown together a pay-per-view. So there's 12 months a year. It's quite a few years, isn't it? You do the maths. About 27 years they've been throwing together pay-per-views now. And the first two are actually a year apart. So UFC 1 and 2 was actually a year apart from each other. UFC 3 was six months from UFC 1. But despite that brief little history of UFC and why the numbers are there, uh, Saturday or Saturday night's card or Sunday's card was absolutely through the roof, UFC 267. If you've got no way of watching it, my advice would be as soon as you finish watching this video, go and find as many highlights as you can. Trust me, it is through the roof. The very first fight was uh, Alessio Dos Santos versus Benoit Saint Denis on the prelims. Now, <laughs> even as a hardcore MMA fan, it's not one I recommend. It was brutal. The fight itself was truly, truly brutal. It should have been stopped in the second round. Uh, Dos Santos, he had St. Denise out on his feet. I'll see if I can put a clip in the video. If I can, I can. If I won't, I won't. Um, he had St. Denise out on his feet and it was, the referee should have stopped it. He should have stopped it. He allowed it to go for another round and a half and it went all the way to a unanimous decision and Dos Santos did win it. Now, it was a fair win. It should have been stopped in the second round, as I said, but it was really, really horrible to watch Benoit Saint Denis fight through what he had to fight through. Um, bearing in mind, these guys are warriors. They won't stop. Like, you can't tell them to stop. They, ha they have to be dragged out of there as a cornerman, as a referee, as a, an official. You have to be making sure that you're doing your due diligence and making sure that these ladies and guys are safe. Uh, because people die. <laughs> Let's face the hardcore fact here. This isn't this isn't touch button in the park. Like Nate Diaz said, it's actually kicking people in the head. So it's brutal. And um, I don't recommend the fight. Um, but as a as a show of two men putting in the fighter spirit, it is absolutely heartbreakingly unreal so big shout out to Elise dos santos and benoit saint denis massive massive shout out um both have my respect to the absolute max uh, the next fight was albert durev versus roman Kop uh, kopolov roman kopolov um is absolutely totally amazing durez actually threw uh, 140 significant strikes in this fight. He threw about 460 overall, but 140 of those were big, big punches on Kopolov. A lot of them were ground and pound as he managed to get him down in the second round and did loads of damage in the second round. Um, fascinating, fascinating fight between two really, really good drilled mixed martial artists. Um, next on the card, which I would love to have a quick, quick browse over, was uh, Ramos versus Tugoff. 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 Sorry, my pronunciations are murderers. Yeah, the, the Tugoff guy was the guy who jumped the cage and punched Conor McGregor. Um, basically, the UFC banned him. And what, what conspired from all that was Khabib said, I won't fight unless you let my brothers fight. Basically, he was willing to lose all of his pay-per-view money, his bet or everything. If Dana was to sack those two, then that was what was going to happen. So, Khabib managed to keep uh, Tugayev on the card. Tugayev won by a split decision. It was two to one. It was an absolutely fantastic fight. Uh, shout out to Pedro Ramos. Shout out to Zabriya Tugayev. It was absolutely brilliant. Brilliant spectacle of mixed martial arts it truly truly was i would love to give a shout out to the main fight on the uh, prelims which was amanda rebos versus verana jandaroba rebas was 10th uh jandaroba was a 12th uh, rebas won 
which will push her now to the top seven uh, in the UFC ranking division for the flyweight for the women, or featherweight for the women, one of the two, can't remember which off the top of my head. But Jandarova was on a bit of a tear, and she's a mean-looking woman. She she's a mean mean looking woman and 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 she fought really good. I didn't really think it was three 0 I thought it was two one. I thought that was a bit unfair by the by the judges there. But a great fight, another really good fight to end the prelims off. A good thing about ending the, the prelims with a good women's fight is that like what tends to happen in the women's division is they don't quite have the punching power to knock each other out. So. The, the fights end up being just brutal. They can end up being absolutely little savages, you women are. You really are. Put us guys to the shame sometime. So we will jump over and have a little look at the main card. The main card was fascinating. We had Vulcan Ozemir against Ankalaev. Uh, me and my mate were calling him Anita. Big shout out to Anita for the night. So uh, Ankalaev versus Ozdemir was absolutely brilliant. Both at light heavyweight at 205. So it was at the championship weight for the main event, which is always interesting because you get to see potential coming off. And I genuinely think Ankalaev has definitely got a chance of becoming a contender in that light heavyweight division. He was quality. Um, Volkan Ozdemir is genuinely really, really, really good. Fantastically good. Uh, having uh, title fights against uh, Daniel Cormier, other people as well. But unfortunately for him, Anita was on his game that day. Anita was the man. That's what we were saying all night. Anita was the man. So I think that will drop Ozdemir out of the top 10 as where Anita will keep on climbing and continue to win. Uh, we'll keep on climbing now further into the top five. I think he'll drop into the top five. He was seventh. Um, so could potentially be a top five fight for Ankolaev, a.k.a. Anita. So next on the card was pretty much what could have been the main event in Li Zhang Lian versus Chamzat Chumayev. Wow. Again, wow. Like within 30 seconds, Chamzat had taken uh, Lee's back. He was on his back in a rear naked choke, shouting to Dana White, stop looking at your phone, stop looking at your phone. Why are you looking at your phone? Stop looking at your phone, I'm going to smash him. Or something like that, he was probably shouting something along those lines. Probably better than that in a better Russian accent. But that's probably exactly what he was shouting. And honestly, within 30 seconds, he was on uh, Zhang Lian's back. And yeah, it got him in a choke. Managed to stuff him down to the floor and rear naked choked him within two and a half minutes. So uh, Hamza Chemaev has basically fought more rounds in the UFC than he has taken punches at this very moment. He is a fascinating fighter. Dana White's favourite and potentially the man to be uh, Kamaru Usman at £185. I... I, I I don't know who's going to win this week coming, but we'll talk about that on a later day. UFC 268 is going to be nuts. So I'd like to jump over to the Islam Makachev versus Dan Hooker fight. And oh my God. Like, Dan Hooker is genuinely a great fighter and he's done bits for the UFC recently. Absolute bits for the UFC by not going home, training, staying in Fight Island and being willing to do everything that the UFC have kind of asked him to do but for Islam Makachev to go in and, and, and submit him in what minute two minutes was genuinely not something I've seen coming I genuinely didn't I thought Hooker was going to keep him at range keep him at distance but oh my god I don't want to spend too long speaking about this fight because I don't want to speak about the fight longer than what it went on for because you might as well just go over and watch it. <laughs> Have a look on the BT Sports page, the UFC page. It will be over there somewhere. Next up was probably contender for fight of the night, which was Peter Yan versus Corey Sandhagen. Oh my goodness. Another absolutely barnstormer of a fight. Absolutely stacked card. Brilliant card from the UFC again. Well done. Thank you, UFC. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Fuck you. I pay for it. I deserve it. I deserve good cards because I pay for it. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely fight of the night. It started off with Sam Hagen doing really well at the start. Me and my friend were saying he's switching stance. He was looking sharp. He kept switching from southpaw to regular. And that, 
Jan couldn't work it out. Jan couldn't work it out. Um, Corey kind of come out second, third round, stop switching stance, um, stop so throwing the left switch kick as well, which was doing bits to Jan in the first round. But Petr Jan did exactly what he always does. He started slow and just got there like a like a racehorse. Starts a bit slow and eventually at full steam, he is looking unstoppable. Uh, I think. It, if he can beat Sterling, him versus uh, coming out of retirement, Henry Cejudo would be amazing. Henry Cejudo, baby. And the main event was Jan Blachowicz versus Glover Cesera, which was absolutely heartbreakingly heartwarming. Um, I'm a massive fan of, of the Polish power. That is Jan Blachowicz. Uh, I loved what he did to Izzy. Um, I like his domination of the 205 over his past two or three fights. He's looked really good. But I'm also so chuffed for Glover to share. He was actually my call. I got the whole. I predicted the last four fights, five fights on the on the pay per view, and I actually predicted Glover. I just had a sneaky feeling about him this time. I just felt his experience and his nous and his know how would over would overcome Blahovic and and manage to beat the Polish power, for want of a better phrase, I guess. It was an absolutely fabulous UFC. It really was. My my, If I'm going to rate that UFC out of 10, which I think I will for every pay-per-view, I'm definitely going to give that UFC a 7.5 out of 10. That's fucking illegal. It was an absolutely great card. There were a few fights that went the distance, which is always good because you get to see the fighters longer, get to see their skills, get to see them offer more than just a quick 30-second knockout. There were submissions and there were a couple of finishes as well. So absolutely banging card. Absolutely amazing weekend of football. Full of shocks, surprises, losses, defeats, draws that you didn't see coming, uh, especially in the Brighton game, at Liverpool, uh, Man City game. Manchester United beating Spurs at home, which I don't actually think I covered in this video. So, shout out to all the Spurs fans, shout out to all the Man United fans. This has been Rum and Sports. I've been Crozy. Peace. Check your panties. About 175,000 rice. I think that was supposed to be pantries. <laughs>